economy map displays the overall environmental and human health impacts of the U.S. economy in one of three display modes. This video introduces the network or supply chain display mode. In network mode, the economy is displayed as a network of flows showing, on the left hand, where in the economy impacts are generated, and on the right hand, where responsibility could be allocated for the final economic demand that causes those impacts. So the network display mode is particularly useful for understanding how impacts flow along supply chains in the economy. This video will explain how to use Economy Map to create supply chain diagrams like this one, which shows the flow of freshwater toxicity impacts along the textile and food supply chains. But first, we'll start with the default view for the network display mode, which organizes all 480 sectors in the economy as a vertical stack in the center of the screen. Each of the irregularly shaped orange blocks in the stack represents a single sector, and each line represents the annual flow of goods and services from one sector to another. Like all of the display modes, the network mode can be viewed according to one of the three impact perspectives. In this case, the vertical stack in the center shows all 480 major industrial sectors in the U.S. economy in descending order of importance based on their direct contribution to global warming. If I click on the intermediate button at the bottom of the screen, the stack is reorganized in descending order of importance based on each sector's intermediate contribution to global warming. And if I click on the final button at the bottom of the screen, the stack is reorganized in descending order of importance based on each sector's final consumption contribution to global warming. If we zoom in on an individual sector, we can see that each sector in the network display mode is shown in a special way to reflect direct, upstream, downstream, and final consumption impacts, and the overall shape of the sector explains its environmental profile. These perspectives are more fully explained in another video. On the left, the bottom part shows the direct impacts of electric services. These are the impacts that are generated by the sector itself. Not surprisingly, since electric power in the United States is mostly generated by burning coal, which creates significant greenhouse gas emissions, the electric se services sector has very high direct impacts. The top part on the left are upstream impacts of the electric services sector. For example, this sector purchases coal, and the coal industry itself generates some direct and upstream impacts. Because a portion of these impacts are generated in response to economic demand from the electric services industry, they are assigned to this industry as upstream impacts. The total of a sector's direct and upstream impacts are described as its intermediate consumption impacts. Now, since the electric services industry sells electricity to lots of other industry sectors, it passes on about half of its total impacts as downstream impacts to other sectors. But it also sells about half of the electricity that it generates to final users like consumers and government. These impacts are referred to as its final consumption impacts. Looking at the big picture, the direct impacts are shown on the left in descending order of magnitude. You could think of the left-hand side of the screen as our natural environment, and all those direct impacts are the environmental cost that is incurred by different industrial activities. The center of the screen is the zone of industrial activity, where different sectors buy and sell from one another, passing on these environmental costs in direct proportion to the goods and services that they sell to one another. Finally, the products of the industrial system are sold to consumers and government on the right-hand side of the screen. It's the economic demand generated by consumers and government that causes the industrial activity, which, in turn, generates environmental costs, which are allocated proportionately to the different segments of final consumption. In this case, private consumers and investors generate economic demand that causes three-quarters of all global warming potential impacts with government and exports responsible for the rest. The other buttons at the bottom of the screen allow me to customize the view sp for specific purposes. Looking at the other buttons in order from the left, the first button toggles whether or not the names of the sectors are displayed. The second button controls the minimum flow that will be displayed. If I raise the threshold by pressing the up arrow, I can limit my view to only the largest, most significant flows. This can also increase the speed of the display by reducing the load on the computer's processor. If I want to return to the default threshold, I can just click on the button itself. 
As you can see, when I hover over a button, its function is shown at the bottom of the screen to the right. The next button selects a stack arrangement of the sectors, which is what is shown here. Using the next button, I can select a grid arrangement, which arranges all of the sectors in a grid based on their classification by the Bureau of Economic Analysis. It is also possible to move individual sectors and groups of sectors manually, and I will explain this in more detail in a moment. The next set of buttons controls the relative size and spacing of the sectors. If I click the up or down arrows for the size button, all of the sectors increase or decrease proportionally in size. And if I click the up or down arrows for the spacing button, the sector spacing increases or decreases proportionally. I have already demonstrated that the three buttons labeled D, I, and F control whether the central stack of sectors is sorted by direct, intermediate, or final consumption impacts. The small black squares below each control whether or not the direct, intermediate, or final flows are highlighted. For example, I can turn off the direct impact flows by clicking on the box below the direct impacts button. I can also turn entire groups of final consumption flows on or off by clicking on the final demand groupings on the right. For example, if I want to show only the final consumption flows related to government consumption, I can click on private and export to turn off those flows, or I could click on government flows to turn them off and click on private to look at the portion of impacts that are generated in response to private consumption. So now let's look at how the network mode can be used to visualize the flow of impacts along supply chains. And let's use freshwater aquatic toxicity as an example to see how I created the view shown at the beginning of the video. Looking first at the economy from the direct impacts perspective, we can see that cotton, feed grains, fabric mills, and a number of other agricultural sectors generate the most freshwater toxicity impacts. But it's really hard to see how the supply chains are organized. So we can start to move sectors around to untangle the flows and start to see the major supply chains. To move a sector, I just click on the sector and hold my mouse down while I drag the sector to a new location. And if I hold down the control key while I'm dragging, the sector will snap to one of five preset vertical locations. So I will drag the cotton sector over to the left since it is clearly high up in the supply chain, and I'll drag broad woven fabric mills up to the top of the screen. And I'll just keep moving sectors to slowly untangle the supply chains. If I want to move a group of sectors, I can draw a window around them and then click and drag one of the sectors and all of the sectors will move at once or I can individually add and remove sectors from the set by holding down the shift key while I select individual sectors. At any point, if I'm using the download version, if I want to save the current locations for this impact category, I can just press the S key and a record of the current location of all sectors will be saved to the applications folder. Then, if I make a mistake and want to return to the previous layout, I can just press the L key to load the saved locations. Economy Map will automatically load the most recent set of locations, but if you want to retrieve an older set, you can find all the location files archived in the application folder. Another helpful trick is selecting all of the downstream sectors of a specific sector by holding down the Option or Alt key while clicking that sector. For example, if I hold down the Option or Alt key while clicking on a sector like Broadwoven Fabric Mills, all of its downstream sectors will also be selected. I can then deselect the fabric mills sector itself by holding down the shift key while I click that sector. I now have all of its downstream sectors selected. Now, if I press the G key, all of those sectors will get grouped together into a sub stack and I can move them to a new location as a group. If I use all of these tricks together, I can ultimately create a map of the economy that shows specific supply chains. If I hold down the shift key while I select some of the sectors in a specific supply chain, I can even highlight that particular supply chain. And if I'm using the download version and I want to save this view, say to use it in a PowerPoint presentation, I can press the X key to export a PDF version of this view to the application folder. So that's how you can use the network display mode to create customized diagrams of individual supply chains. There is more information about this display mode on the help and frequently asked questions pages.